welcome and good morning. In light of the circumstances uh, surrounding COVID-19, we wanted to still offer our Wednesday morning Eucharist uh, to those who unusually come and those in our wider parish families. If you have a prayer book at home, you can follow along. We begin at page 355 in the prayer book. Holy Eucharist, right to sleep. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Let us pray. Give ear to our prayers, O Lord, and direct the way of your servants in safety under your protection. That amid all the changes of our earthly pilgrimage, we may be guarded by your mighty aid, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, so now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinance that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of our ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. See, just as the Lord my God has charged me, I now teach you statutes and ordinances for you to observe in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who when they hear all these statutes will say, surely this is a great nation and a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I'm setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 78, found on page 692 of your prayer book. We'll read verses 1 through 6. Hear my teaching, O my people, and climb your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob, and established the law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, 
till heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have this wonderful lesson from Deuteronomy this morning. And Deuteronomy is a law book for Judaism and provides a book of care, regulating life by law. Moses speaks to the people and gives them all kinds of instructions about how they are to live and how they are to be. In particular, Moses speaks, teaches them about the covenant between the Israelites and the land, a permanent aspect of Jewish self-understanding, and sometimes a, 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 an understanding that we as Christians have a hard time grasping. In chapter 5, just beyond the, the lesson that we had this morning, Moses commands the Israelites to live by the Decalogue commandments we have been reciting during Lent in our Sunday services. And a little later, in chapter 6, Moses speaks to the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. And talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. And write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Some have summarized Deuteronomy as the message of one God, one people, one sanctuary. And this Book of Deuteronomy has great influence on all of us as Christians and as Jews, sisters and brothers. And we know how Jesus summarized the law and know the faithful Jew that Jesus was. The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is like this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. In this time of COVID-19, we're having to live by regulations imposed on us, regulations that are solely about keeping us all safe as can possibly be with the hope of mitigating the spread of this coronavirus. It brings with it a new way of living, a way that isolates us from our normal way of being in community. This isolation challenges us to find new ways of reaching out by telephone or by using technology, or perhaps even turning to writing a note to someone, a handwritten note to someone can be such a gift. So we're learning to be different in this time and we also want to find all kinds of ways to reach out to one another to still be in community. Abraham Heschel is one of the beloved theologians, Jewish theologians, and he has a wonderful little book called Sabbath, The Sabbath. And it speaks to all the many different ways that Jews honor the Sabbath. And one of the, 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 the commandments that we have been reading is to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. I want to read just a little portion of Heschel's book. He says, six evenings a week we pray, God, our going out and our coming in. On the Sabbath evening we pray instead, embrace us with a tent of thy peace. If 
Upon returning home from synagogue, we intoned the song, Peace Be to You, Angels of Peace. The seventh day sings. An old allegory asserts when Adam saw the majesty of the Sabbath, its greatness and glory, and the joy it conferred upon all beings, he intoned a song of praise for the Sabbath day, as if to give thanks to the Sabbath day. Then God said to him, Thou singest a song of praise to the Sabbath day, and singest none to me, the God of the Sabbath. Thereupon the Sabbath rose from its seat and prostrated herself before God, saying, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. And the whole of creation added, And to sing praise unto thy name, O Most High. It goes on to say, Angels have six wings, one for each day of the week, with which they chant their songs. But they remain silent on the Sabbath, for it is the Sabbath which then chants a hymn to God. It is the Sabbath that inspires all creatures to sing praise to the Lord. In the language of the Sabbath morning liturgy, to God who rested from all action on the seventh day and ascended upon his throne of glory, who rested the day of rest with beauty, God called the Sabbath a delight. This is the song and the praise of the seventh day on which God rested from God's work. The seventh day itself is uttering praise, a song of the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. Therefore, all creatures of God bless God. The Sabbath teaches all beings whom to praise. I wonder during this time of COVID-19, when we are apart from one another, if we might think about Sabbath time in our own way. I love that notion of the angels having six wings and, and also the fact that on the Sabbath evening, Jews pray, embrace us with a tent of thy peace. During this time, I think we all need a tent of God's peace to surround us and to remind us that God walks with us every step of this way. This time and always, and especially in this time of being apart. And may that be so for each one of us. Amen. Amen. As is our custom on Wednesday mornings, we continue now with the litany of healing prayers, confession, and function. This is not found in your prayer book, but your responses will be clear as we go along. Let us pray and lift before God this day the names of those for whom we offer our prayers, especially Fred Andrews, Kathy Arthur, Carol Beicher, Burrow Bellows, Catherine and Nancy Barraza, Oscar and Ginny Baraki, Mateus Burke, Ray Burke, Senna Calder and family, Sally Cody, Mary and Putin, Vicki Corbett, Tony Custodio, Brenda Crawford, Lori Daniels, Terry and Tony Easter, Maureen Eckford, Bill Oebelhor, Anne Ide, Adele and Carrie Jackson, Jan Charsky, Linda Lynch, Gail Overbeck, Ray and Pam Ryan, John Schumacher, Rob Schur, Trudy and Donna Smith, Diane Stoka, Jim Siddle, William Wallace, Ken Way, and Sean and Jessica Wood. At this time, I invite your own prayer to have silently allowed this time. And we especially lift up all those suffering from COVID-19, all those who are anxious or fearful about the effects of COVID-19, both physically and in our society and all those who are anxious or working to provide care for those in need. God, Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. 
Your friendship you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, whose hand of might has life and life have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord God. Grant to all who seek your guidance, and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will, and an awareness of your presence. Hear, Hear us, O Lord God. Mend broken relationships, and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord God. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. Hear us, O Lord God. Grant to the dying peace and the holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord God. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord God. You are the Lord who does wonders, you have declared your power among the people. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your life we see life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your Amen. compassion, forgive us our sins, now and unknown, now, now. things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you redeemed us. Save us and help us to be one with you. At this time, I invite any and all who desire the right of healing and anointing. This is a very small number present this morning, but we are mindful of those watching this video and of all who would come forward if they were here. So please know the clergy will lift up in prayer those who are on your heart and ask God's healing balm and healing presence to comfort and heal these days. Rich, I anoint you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us part from you all sickness of body and mind and spirit, that you may be restored to wholeness for perfect service in the life of your name. Amen. The blessing and praise. Amen. Almighty God, we desire wholeness and health in all of us. Heal the sick and all who are in our neighborhood. And you have promised to forgive us for sins of the church.
The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower, who also put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for help and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. This is still recording. Continue our service of Holy Eucharist on page 361 in your prayer book, if you have prayer books. And as always, we offer our Eucharist to the glory of God, and today especially in thanksgiving for all those who are watching from afar, that we remember you in this Eucharist and that you are receiving somehow from afar with us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, who is in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who is in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent to Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience for your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray, continuing on page 365 in your prayer book. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look mercifully on this your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore through Christ our Lord. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, the love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.